I decided to teach because I really want to make a difference in, in children's lives. I know a lot of adults will say kids never know when they're ready. Learners don't want our opinion. I don't think a lot of learners take the subject seriously. I was taught that sex gives you AIDS. I knew that sex was a bad thing to do. We grew up knowing it is taboo to talk about it. We were a bit shy to hold each other's hand or to kiss each other. A teacher needs to remember that this child needs support. Did you know that the average age of drug dependency in South Africa is 12 years? In fact, alcohol and drug use is found to be more prevalent in learners from grade 8 to 11, with the Western Cape reported to have the highest number of learners, school-going learners, who binge drink. I'm Dino Ranaga, welcome to Breaking the Silence. Today we discuss how alcohol and drugs can lead us to engage in risky sexual behavior, with unprotected sex being the number one behavior of concern. Joining us today is Nombeli Sombanga, a teen coaching expert who is also known as a youth alchemist. She'll be watching the learners discussion backstage with our panel of educators. I'm Donny Yuvisaghi, teaching life orientation. It's not easy. It's a very difficult job, uh, but it's something that I enjoy. My name is Liesl Moss. I'm an educator. I'm currently teaching business studies grade 10 to 12. I'm Felicity Julius. I'm the HIV coordinator of Metro North Education District. Today, our panel of learners are Shagan, Jade, JBI, Chandre, Lysanda, Taryn. How's it, gang? Hi. Thank you. Hey, can't hear you. Let's do it again. Hey. How's it, gang? Hey. I guess thank you so much for joining us. Today we're talking about the big SEX and drug abuse, substance abuse. But before we talk about it, I want us to watch a clip of a young girl who got started on drugs at an even younger age. Take a look. I grew up in quite a dysfunctional home. My parents got divorced um, at a very young age. The reason why they got divorced was because my dad's a recovery, well, he, he was an addict and alcoholic. When I was in grade four, I got exposed to weed for the first time. And when I took my first pull, like, it felt like this was it. Like, this is cool. So I started smoking like every day after my first time. I started banking classes and my home life was really crap. I didn't have to be myself, and it took me out of my comfort zone. End of grade five, did I start, like, I took my first line of cat, and I knew nothing about, like, that kind of drug. I would, like, search on the internet, like, drug dealers in Randburg. Like, I knew nothing. I would, like, take my mom's card and walk to spa, take her phone, draw three grand, delete the message, and that would last me, like, a week and a half or so. So my mom would find drugs on me or in my room. I remember once I said I was trying to help a friend, I found it on them and I stole it away from them so they couldn't use. But I think she would try, pretend to believe me. And it's not like I didn't care, I did. It's just this disease still had control over me. Sure, she started marijuana in grade four. How old are you in grade four? You're like ten. Yeah, you're, you're about ten. seven in grade. You're about ten. 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 At school now, have you drank at school? I was in primary school that time. You were in primary school, so yes. you started drinking in primary school. Yes, I was very naughty. Is it? We want to feel accepted. Actually, we want to fit in. Mm. No one likes to be outside and outsider. And I know I had the feeling that once I wanted to be in the circle, in the clique. So mm. that's why we crack under peer pressure. Mm. Your worst case of peer pressure, anyone? I was like 15, mm -hmm. 15 years old. Mm -hmm. Decided I'm gonna go to my friend's house because her parents both work day jobs, so they're out of the house early morning. We decided we're gonna go to our house, have some friends over. We didn't drink or anything, like just smoke. But we were almost caught because, I mean, our daddy came in and then we had to hide ourselves inside the cupboards. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, because the doors was locked and everything, so. Yeah. Died. When you're in the act of rebellion, it feels like you're taking ownership of something, this thing called your life. But it can end up not so fun. Yes. 
in most cases. We don't, we don't think about the consequences of our actions when we're having fun. And drug access, having access to drugs at school, do, are there people that sell drugs at school? Yeah. Yes. Always. Yeah. Really? Always. At every school, there are always merchants. Like, oh. it's either cigarettes or um, weed, whatever. It's like so easy to get weed on our school. It's like everywhere you can go. If you you can smell it a mile away. Really? Yes. It's bad. It is freely available. I think we can't deny the problem. It's happening in our schools, and I'm quite aware of it. Our kids find every single day uh, children selling substances. From your grade one learners that you're sitting with issues like this. So it's not that shocking, it's just um, you, you're afraid of what is really happening to our, 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 our leaders of tomorrow. Are the teachers involved in kind of diffusing this or bringing this to an end? Are they doing anything about it? Yes, they are doing something about it. What are they school. doing? Are they kicking out them out? But the problem is, while they're kicking them out, they are giving it to the other learners who are their friends who are taking over their business, selling it now around the school. One teacher actually tried to, uh, when there was a big fight, then he was actually trying to, he like, get them off each other and stuff. But then he got injured. And the then teacher got injured? The teacher got injured. And, that, and then he had to go for an operation in his arm and, that's like why he decided, nah, it's just... Because the school didn't even want to pay the medical bill. Our problem is it's becoming bigger and bigger. Who do you blame? Do you usually blame just educators? I don't think so. For as long as there are drugs, there will be violence. Yes. There will be issues of lack of safety. There will be... You, there will be an uncomfortable environment. Yes. I am there as a support. I make contact if it's substance abuse, and I make contact with our nearest police station. I ask them to come out. So we go out and we look what we can do to support our learners. I really want us to honestly and openly talk about sex, baby. Let's talk about you and me. Let's talk about, hey, hey. <laughs> If you think of sexual intercourse and you think of intoxication, being under the influence versus being sober, right? On which moment would you, re would you be most likely to use a condom? When you're sober. When you're sober, now. Yes. Basically, the way the two links is when you are intoxicated, whether it's weed, alcohol, it's like your hormones just, it's like they activate, basically. Mm. So that, I think that's how the two links. I picked up a liking for wine, and I find that wine stimulates my hormones to a degree. Why do you think we get so clumsy when we're intoxicated? It's not like you get clumsy. You feel more confident in what you do. And I get, if I go to a party, friends are gonna be there like, you have to drink, and you're gonna let go of yourself. Don't be so prim and proper. Then let go, start drinking, and one thing leads to another. Mm -hmm. And find this cute boy, or maybe you're crushed there. Like, oh, I loved him so long. Oh, does I look right? And like that, and now you're gonna start drinking to make him see you as a person. And what happens when he and sees you as a person and you've both been drinking? It could lead to sex. What kind of sex? And say sex. I think so. That's what we say. That's exactly <laughs> what we say. Sex. They don't see the link because they go for the enjoyment. They live for the moment. It can lead to a se um, risky sexual behavior. The risk of sex without a condom is higher. That much we need to be cut and clear on. That how much of your life are you willing to risk for a moment of pleasure? After going to my first rehab, two weeks after, um, I was introduced to my drug of choice, which is crystal meth. That took me down quick. Um, I was in another rehab within like six months. I started living in crack houses. Now I got exposed to some really scary things. And like with no more income from my mom or my, my dad or... I started getting into escorting, which I would earn like a lot of money. Money was no longer the problem, so I'd just get more and more high. And then I was starting to inject um, heroin and take GHB, which is a day trade drug. I always promised myself within my addiction, like when I was on weed, I wouldn't start using cats, I'd never do that. And then when I was on cats, I would never use crystal meth, like I'm not that bad. 
after that, my biggest thing is I would never sell myself. I would never sell myself. Everything I said I wouldn't do, I did. So we're talking about sex and drug abuse. Um, she ended up selling herself uh, to maintain the highs, and she says that most of the things that she swore to herself she wouldn't do, she's done. All of us sitting around here, I'm sure we've got things that we've said we won't do, but we ended up doing. Um, I'll start with myself. In high school, I thought I had sworn to myself that I'll never smoke marijuana. I did. Well, I promised myself I would never smoke cigarettes. And, and I did. You did? Yes. I promised myself I'd never disobey my parents, like, but I did. Jade? I'm a very lenient person. Mm -hmm. So if I tell myself I won't do anything, eventually it's going to happen. Mm -hmm. so. I promised myself that drinking was not my thing in high school, but then it happened in my first year in Red 8. I promised myself that I would never do any drugs, but I did at a younger age. Uh -huh. I had myself as I said, I would never um, with any of drink or drink, but I had it done at a later stage. When you're intoxicated, it's like, yeah, like I said, yeah, your hormones are activated, so there are like cases where teens would be like, I don't have a boyfriend, so whoever it is that's willing to like have sex with me tonight, like. I'm mm. just going to put myself out there. So that one, you can come, we can have sex, and that's basically the thought. Mm. How many times have you been under the influence of alcohol and you feel like, I could get with a guy now? I think I'm ready. All the time. Is it? All the time. If she knows this, this is what alcohol does to her, try to do it, try to avoid certain situations not to go on a regular basis to parties and ways you can limit our alcohol intake. I like your honesty. You never, you never. go numb. It doesn't influence you hormonally at all. No. I laugh a lot. <laughs> <laughs> like a lot. Yes. I think that's all I am supposed to do is laugh. I don't feel different hormonal, like, down there. You don't feel different down Yeah, there. no. I'm Jade Fisher, 16 years old. I'm in grade 10. I would like to become a paediatric surgeon because I always love the thought of helping or saving someone. The people are extremely nice here yeah, and you won't walk past someone that won't greet you. You get lots of alcoholics around here as well. And usually you would see drug addicts walking, some of them worn out and extremely old. I understand that people have problems that they deal with and people deal with their problems in different ways, but I don't understand why they would run to, to substances specifically. Okay, I'm just gonna make an example. If I don't have money and I am an addict, mm -hmm. I need to get my next high. Mm -hmm. I'm gonna do anything to get money. I'm gonna steal or anything. I also think about selling myself, mm -hmm. like selling my body to, um, to someone and then having sex with him who's not paying me and then I can go buy my substance and mm -hmm. then abuse it. Mm -hmm. That's also something that's like, that's what I think, I think so. a link. Well, you said you've done drugs. What drugs did you do? Duck. Duck. How old were you? I was 11 years old. Mm. It was one night at my sister's house. Me and a friend, we slept over. Then my sister decided we can have a little bit of fun. Then she came with the lighter and this, um, the, 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 I just took one inside of my system. Afterwards, a few minutes, I started to hear a lot of sounds at the back of my head. Yeah. <laughs> I couldn't understand, <laughs> but. You were hallucinating. <laughs> <laughs> I wasn't myself at all. They are in the experimental phase, they want to know because they are, it's, it's a taboo subject at home, or they can be exposed to it every day. Sometimes you feel that your hands are tied. It makes it extremely frustrating. After that, that was the first time I never done it. Never, ever, ever again. again. Well done. Well done. It's always difficult for a learner to try it because you can get whooped. Make mistakes, learn to get up and move on. What do you want to be taught about sex at school? The consequences. Mm -hmm. Teachers, they don't go in depth about what the consequences actually are. Mm -hmm. They just say like, that's gonna happen, that's gonna happen. But they don't go and explain to you 
in depth about what it might lead to. We have a volume of information, but we do not have enough time in terms of periods to teach what you need to teach. In my class, I must speak like openly now. In my class, my LO teacher can never speak about sex because then they make stupid remarks and stuff like that. Or even if you just bring up the word teenage pregnancy or teen moms or whatever, it's like stupid comments always comes up. Some of the teachers maybe are old and they can't really explain it to you the way you want them to explain. So someone younger or the same age as you was explain it better. I think it's still like that. Meestal, when it comes by sex and substance abuse, mm. then is it meestal the younger lange wat we sal strijd met ons praat oor wat dit is, waarvan die ouwe reg is nou weer sal bykie terughou van ons sal weet nooit wat die volgende persoon sal dink, of die ouwe van die leder sal dink, om sy leer my kind oor sikke goed, maar toen sy diezelfde by jou is met jou eie kind. So. It was just a bit shocked to know that they don't feel comfortable speaking to educators about certain topics and how to make informed decisions. It was a bit shocking. So, we're going to call the teachers and we're going to have a healthy discussion with the teachers. And I want you to feel free with your educators and ask them why they're uncomfortable to teach you as you should be taught and give you the information so it can make you or help you make better decisions for yourself. You comfortable with that? Yes. Fantastic. Let's go there. The tipping point for me was when like, I realised how much I'd lost, that I no longer have a family, and all I had left was like a needle in my arm in a crack house and feeling hopeless, looking horrible. I knew if I was going to go to rehab, like, this was it now, because I don't have it in me anymore. When I took my first pull of weed or my first joint, um, I didn't know that a few years later I'd be living in a crack house with a needle in my arm. It's all fun now, because it was for me at first too, but it, it doesn't end there. And I've been clean for six months and three days now. No, yeah, six months and four days. <laughs> and yeah, life's good now. Like I'm happy again, like I can smile. Taking the conversation to the next level, joined now by our educators as well as our expert, of course, Numveli Sombanga. Welcome all. Welcome, welcome. Thank you very much. You were sitting in another room, listening to your learners, listening to how they've been openly expressing themselves. Liesel, do you have anything to share with us about what you saw and what you heard? I can say as much I'm very proud in our kids for coming out, for sharing the stories, mm -hmm. because I think this is going to have a major impact mm -hmm. on the child, the learner that's going to watch it. They feel that sex education with life orientation being taught as a subject, you don't go deep as educators. I think the problem is that you have so many kids in your class. How do you sometimes deal with different responses? Mm -hmm. And that's the challenge. Uh, you have certain groups that can absorb what you're trying to teach them and tell them, others not. What is going to happen when I'm under the influence of substances and I'm having my first sexual experience and encounter? There's no education that brings me back to maturity or brings me back to sobriety. I've heard I'm old. <laughs> <laughs> How does that make you feel? And because I'm old, I can't talk to kids mm. about the reality. Mm. And I think that's the biggest mistake. Mm. The youngsters must step into the wealth of experience of all the teachers. They have nothing to hide. Uh, they must be like me, being old, bold, uh, and clear about certain things. <laughs> I agree with you, and I think there's a lot of wisdom that's coming from Donnie. I do think that there's a need for educators to continue to develop themselves as well, because the error is that um, we're living in an information age. Teens sometimes get more information than teachers are, yes. are, um, are capable of knowing. And I mean by this that sometimes what makes teachers shut teens down is because they don't know what the teens are talking about. Mm. Um, and also it, an educator doesn't want to feel or look stupid in front of the teenagers, so they shut them out because they think, you know too much, you talk too much just shut up. One of the other things that makes teenagers also run into sex and drugs and um, alcohol is um, 
when they're trying to spite their parents. Um, oh. And by that I mean, if, if you think that your parents are not listening to you, if you think that your parents are not paying attention to you, if you think that um, you acting up will make your parents um, come back together again mm -hmm. if they were separating. So what tends, tend to, teens tend to do is that they do all of these things that will make them get attention so they will get into trouble. The things that they know that are wrong, just to get their parents' attention um, from fighting in school and from sex or from getting drunk and partying, mm. mainly because you know if I do all of these wrong things, my mom will have to leave work and come and get me at school mm. as a way of getting attention. I hear what you're saying, but you need to bear in mind um, the, the role and responsibilities of the educator. And I, for me, it seems like sometimes learners need just somebody to, to listen to, somebody that's there for them. But the reality is you've got 35 to 30 learners in your class, so it's impossible. Thank you so much for taking the time to chat to us. Have you learned anything? Yes. yes. To better relations between educators and learners. Hear, hear. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I've learned something from our kids. Uh, sometimes we need to listen to them. It made me look at our learners or at my classes totally different. I think we need to make our programs more approachable to all learners and not only a few at the school. The main thing is here to be open, to be comfortable and to allow your personal development to take place. Educators emphasize the link between substance use, HIV, STIs and pregnancy. Try to understand learners but still refer them for help. Parents, your children learn their behaviors from you. Learners, alcohol and drugs leave you vulnerable. On today's episode of Breaking the Silence, we started out talking about sex and substance use. However, coming to the end of it, we've learned that it's more than just that. It's about relationships. It's about our emotions. It's about becoming better at our relationships with our friends, our parents, and our teachers in becoming better and more responsible human beings. I'm Dineo Ranaga. Thank you very much for tuning in. Catch you on the next episode of Breaking the Silence. Mm -hmm.